The musty aroma of knowledge. Greetings. I am Cranley Hubert. I assume no further introduction is required. Oh, come now. Surely you've heard of my writing, or my work with the historical guild of Arcs? No? me a real question, why don't you? The answer is Hubert Oak, of course. My near namesake. A question for you. In what year did Lucian the Divine depart from us? Ah, <sighs> correct. Perhaps I'm still being too easy on you. Any drunk on the street could have gotten that right. Time for a real challenge. Name the first king of the dwarves. have had some modicum of education in your time. One final question. Answer this correctly, and you can consider yourself a scholar on par with yours truly. Fail, and I shall have to show you my door. The Sorcerer King from times of yore, Bracchus Rex, had a twin. What was her name? Stumbled at the final hurdle. Now perhaps you'd like to return outside and consort with those who have... Greetings. I am... Oh, come now. Surely you've heard of my writing, 
or my work with the historical guild of arcs, I would call you a vulgarian. Now perhaps you'd like to return outside and... Greetings. I am Cran... Oh, come now. Surely you heard of my... Ha! <laughs> Ask me a real question, why don't you? <gasps> Time for a real... Hmm. One final question. The Sorcerer King stumbled at the fu... Now perhaps you'd like... Oh. Wonderful smell. Greetings. Oh, come now. Surely you heard of my writing? <laughs> I think not. Perhaps, let's see. Three major houses govern the ancient empire. There's the House of Law, the House of War. Now, what's the third? Hmm. Well, that was a rather straightforward one. You'd have to be an utter dolt to have not heard of the House of Dreams. Another question, then. In what year was our savior, Lu- <gasps> Correct. Time for a real challenge. Name the fir- Hmm. Clearly you have. One final question. The Sorcerer King from Times of Yore. Bra- Well. Well, well, well. I must confess, your knowledge is impressive. Please, allow me to invite you to join me in my private chambers for further intellectual discourse. Excellent. Please, come along. Quite simple, once you know the trick. You place a book onto the pile, and a hatch at the back of the fireplace is unlocked. Go on down. I'll be right behind you. Beyond my sanctum, true intellect flourishes best in the dark, don't you think? My sanctum, my intellectual womb, my palace of the mind. Welcome, and make yourself comfortable. Pray tell me, what's the darkest, most delicious nugget of knowledge you've come across in your time? With a mischievous twinkle in his eye, Cranley glances from you to some nearby skill books, rare ones. He raises an eyebrow. Impress him, and we might win a prize, it seems. Cranley Hubert's eyes bulge with amazement. Oh, oh, I do. And please, let's not be so formal. Down here, call me Gigi. He gestures absently for you to select from the skill books as your reward. It seems that the poor fellow is quite taken aback by what you told him. Without another word, he wanders away from you, deep in thought. Please, speak.
Nice. I'll need to get clever with this lock.
I've spotted something. Nobody said anything about fighting monsters. Killing our host, Sylph!
A guard rushes in front of you, and before you can flinch, the point of a sharp spear draws a bead of blood from the artery in your neck. Halt! State your name! Now! Marcus! Guard, lower your spear. An old friend's come to pay a visit. Isbeal, we must not... I'm well aware of the beast's ambitions, your highness. Do as she says. Lower your spear. Yes, of course, my queen. If you've business here, get on with it. Your Highness, Bloom of Duna, Flame of the Forge, I present your bastard cousin and the Seed of Divinity, Marcus Miles. Marcus is dead. I am the Beast of the Sea, and you will address me as such. The Queen opens her mouth as if to speak, but Beast cuts her off with an ominous growl. I know your deceit, Justinia. I may be beast, but I'm no demon. And only a demon could dream up an evil like Operation Downfall. Isbel intrudes before the Queen can speak. Your Majesty's brilliance has known no bounds. The Order has living tools of war. My Queen must attack before they can invade the homeland. Justinia turns to Isbel, looking for assurance. And Isbel begins to chuckle. Her laugh is low and measured at first, but grows in magnitude until she can barely breathe. Oh, but you think yourself so clever, don't you, beastie boy? <laughs> Fine. I'm tired of pretending I serve this weak wench anyway, but it doesn't matter. You can't stop the death fog. The wheels are in motion. Isbeal? Shut your royal maw, Justinia. Arcs will fall and your memory writ. They will believe it was your will, your plan, your command. Isbeal, hush yourself. I must think. Hush? <laughs> you pitiful woman. Do you truly expect me to be silent? You blink yourself awake to the cold gaze of a thousand stones and the hot gaze of the dwarf Ismail, right hand of the queen. Oh, good. You're awake. Yeah, at first, I figured I'd just kill you. But then I thought, Ismail, <laughs> you're wasting an opportunity here. Don't bother thanking me just yet, though. I dare say you'll be begging to die before long. <laughs> I'll start with lesser toxins, just to see how you react, and take it from there. How strong a dose can a god woken handle? How long does it take for one to succumb? <laughs> so many questions. Your lips open, but no words spill forth. You try to lift your head, but it is no match for gravity. She has paralyzed you. Only your eyes are free to move. Uh-uh, don't fight it. You'll only make things worse. Oh, but I've been so rude. You should know the real me. Oh, it's good to give myself a rest. Those masks can be darned pesky. Good. Make yourself comfortable. The harder you fight, the harder the experiment will be on you. Huh. Oh, that dose proves quite alarming for my normal subject. Let's try a new approach, shall we? Let's see now. Uh, I have just the thing. Just the spritz, mind you. You struggle to move, and you feel your toes wiggle, and your fingers twitch. 
The paralysis is waning. Hmm, interesting. Some of the results are quite unexpected. Ah, let's move on to death fog. Live or die, you've already proven most... Well, I was going to say useful, but perhaps entertaining is the better word. His bale turns the valley, but no fog wafts forth. In that moment, you feel your bones and muscles awaken. You've regained control of your body at last. What's wrong with it? God, come! The guard woke is broken free of my spell! I've got to get out of this death trap.
Queen Justinia. Get out of this deck. Good riddance to a bad dwarf. Now to find the Queen Justinia. I've spotted something. You look at your companions in shock. Black Ring influence or not, the enormity of the Queen's plan is revealed to kill everyone in the city.
I'm not surprised by this. You shouldn't be either. You can't fight darkness with darkness. You just can't. Whatever she intended, the end result will be more death and destruction. An eye for an eye is all well and good. Thousands of eyes for an eye is somewhat of an exaggeration. safe in my death. I faced the grave before, you know. Yet through the God King, I have eternal life. You've such a soft spot for that woman. Do you really think she didn't know exactly what releasing Death Fog into Arcs would mean? Don't be fooled. I may have planted the seed, but she gleefully tended to it. My entourage is taking good care of her, I promise. Well, as good as you would expect. If she's missing a few digits, or bearing a few new bruises, that's just... expected wear and tear. The Master's purpose is his own to speak, not mine. You're good with words, so sincere, I almost believed you. But let's pretend I fell for your little persuasion game. I'll tell you the Black Ring's plans on one condition. You release the Death Fog. You bring my mission to an end. The spirit pauses, then nods. The God King feeds on war, on death, on disease. On the rich source the living ones carried within them, knowingly or not. I think this clear by now. The Death Rock was not just a murder bomb, but a tool. A tool for sowing discord. A tool for pitting the Order against the Dwarven Kingdom. A tool for ridding us of those who would see us fail. Every race, every creed, and every claimant to the title of Divine. Isbel's voice rises, and her fists tighten. You presume she'd have gone red with fury, were she not wholly translucent. I lived for that day, Godwoken. The flesh of every magister melted like butter in the sun. The paladin's eyes bugged out in horror as they watched their spouses and children choke on the death fog, clogging their lungs. There would be screams first. The spirit's eyes and mouth narrow. In her silence, the noise of splashing sewer water bounces from the stony walls and into your ears. You have lit Isbel's fire. She is a bomb, a banshee, an erupting volcano. I couldn't know! You weren't there! When the portal opened and the death bot poured in, you weren't there! 
To see the skin burst, to see the blood bubbles foam from their mouths. Have you ever felt your own saliva sizzle? Have you ever felt your own brain pressing against the inside of your skull? I have. I have felt it. That agony was the doing of the divine. For his word to suffer the same fate is not punishment enough. In death, I was... I was given a chance. I made a decision. One that I have never regretted. It is time then. Time to face him. I am ready for his gift and his sanction. The spirit struggles for breath, a breath that will never come. An eternity choking to death beckons. A nauseating wave of pain and fear washes from the spirit. Pain from what was inflicted upon her and fear that her suffering would never end. The spirit laughs soundlessly at something unseen. You realize that what you thought was a maniacal glint in his eye is, in fact, the last glowing embers of the acidic fire that burned his eyeballs away. Spotted something. Twisted and torn in her heart and her mind, the spirit emits an unbearable desire for it all to be over, for good and forever. Speak.
spotted something. Junk. Now is not the time for a bath. Sounds like the Queen. Justinia expels a long, shuddering sigh. It joins the other whispers that permeate the dank sewer air. A moment passes. What do you want from me, Marcus? What can I possibly say at this moment and in this place to appease you? It's not about appeasement. It's about innocent lives. Cannot let you release the death fog. Marcus, the city is safe. I know the truth about Isbeal, about the Black Ring. It's over now. So you're telling me you weren't malicious? You were just too weak to know you were being played? What a god's damned joke, Justinia. You're right. Is that what you want to hear? You're right. Go and tell everyone how right you are. But you know what your rightness won't do. Protect a kingdom. And protect it I did, while you went off to live your god's damned pirate fantasy. And if I knew then what I knew now, Marcus, 
I would still exile you. You would walk the Isle of Mist to this day, stalked by demons and living the nightmares they planted in you. Call me a fool or a tyrant. Call me whatever you want, but I was still there. I was there. I lived reality while you were playing games. Lad, you really lead me wrong. Call it. I know you got my back. We'll do as you say then. Go back to them, Justinia. I'll go too. We have to rebuild. For us and for them. Have you forgotten your own journey, Marcus? I know you love your people. I know you would see them free. But I must be the one to face them. To release them from the prison I made for them. You are God-woken. Think of what you can do for the kingdom as divine. Far more than I can as queen. Go. I will serve the people as they ask. You will serve them as they warrant. Justinia kisses his cheek. You are the beast of the sea. The God-woken. The divine in waiting. You will do your people proud. Thank you. 